Sometimes I go on the ground too, but almost always it's too far. It would take, you know, all day on a snow machine, and there's no roads, so we just you have to go by helicopter to even get close to the animals. Just too far. So this is a picture of one project with a caribou. Do you see the caribou? And we were transporting them, we were catching pregnant cows and putting them in a pen to protect the babies from wolves for three weeks, four weeks, and then we let them all go because the caribou numbers were going down so quickly. So we would So you are taking all the caribous? Just uh, a percentage. So you know the cow the cows were very old, so we were taking we took uh, fifty to a hundred and we catch them with a net gun, I put drugs up the nose, mm -hmm. and then I check with ultrasound. If it's pregnant, it stays, if not, it goes. So then we keep them while they have their babies, and then let them all go again. For how long is it take? Uh, about six weeks. Yeah. So we darted the animal, it ran into water, 
So what we, we have ready for the life jackets. So we put the life jacket on the moose head and pull the cord so it would keep the head afloat. And then we put the radio collar on. And then we reversed it and just held. And then it just swam across. But it was um, carfentanil, like a torphine. So a very fast reversal, like two, two minutes. And it just swam across the lake and it was okay. <laughs> And so a lot of the work that I'm doing is also to do new drug combinations to do them better um, and also to support them when they're doing the field anesthesia. So we do also do oxygen up the nose. And this is a little pulse oximeter. And we brought one for you to, to so we can try it because it's so tiny. Mm. And for some animals it works just to put it on the tongue. It most may to fit on your finger. Mm. But it can work on, you know, it would probably work on a leopard, it works on a moose, a sheep, things, probably the small deer. Just look at on so you can hear their heart rate and you can know how much oxygen is in the blood. Mm -hmm. This is, and I also work on muskox. Uh, have you heard of a muskox before? I don't know. They have the horns. They look very prehistoric. Mm -hmm. like, yeah. So this is with a helicopter. And we, I darted this one. And the female would not leave the male. Usually they're groups, you know, 10 to 15. Mm -hmm. And if anything threatens them, they back into a circle with all their butts together. Mm -hmm. And they won't leave each other. They put the babies in the middle. But there was just two. So when I darted the one, she wouldn't leave. She kept coming back, so we kept trying to chase her and chase her, but then we had to just dart her too, because mm -hmm. there was no way to get her away from him. Um, 
and the effect of climate change on some of the hibernating uh, small animals, and this is a marmot, Marmotomonax. Marmotomonax. So they're up in the mountains. Uh, is it a rodent? It's a rodent. It's yeah, rodents. kind of a rodent. Yeah. I think they're rodents. <laughs> rodents. Yeah. And so all there's all a lot of the, all the marmots hibernating. Uh, not all of them, but some of them, like the bears, uh, not not moose or bison, no, but bears, uh, marmots, the, the rodents, squirrels, mm -hmm. most of those hibernates. Wolf, wolverine, <coughs> will hibernate. So for this project, we actually had, you can see I'm putting a transmitter into the belly because they don't really have a neck hard to put a collar. So we put the transmitter right in. And it also keeps the temperature when they're hibernating. So if their body temperature goes down or up, it keeps a track of that all the way through hibernation. Mm -hmm. So for this project, we actually had a, a gas anesthesia machine out there, portable, that we just took out and set up a tent and did the surgeries in the tent up the mountain. Field surgery. <laughs> and let's get the caribou. And this shows um, sometimes we dart caribou with drugs, but sometimes it's a net net gun. Just depends on the project. Um, our net gun. In the net gun, you just the gun to yeah. kill the net. Yeah, yeah. And you just shoot. Them. Yeah, the net goes around. There's weights. Yeah. There's little weights. Do you have any video of something? No, I have video of the darting, but not of the net. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. The weights, when the weights go out, they wrap around. Mm -hmm. But sometimes the weights will hit and break a leg, mm -hmm. or the animal will do somersaults and break its neck. So it's really good if you have very, very deep snow. Otherwise, it can be really dangerous for the animal. So we also work on doll sheep, which is the big horn sheep as well, as Joseph was saying. This is a doll sheep that's white, and they're only in the Yukon in Alaska. And I also work on, on bears sometimes, depending, usually problem bears. We're trying to trap them and move them away from communities. Uh, Martin, which are like, uh, what are Martin and Estella? Maybe mm -hmm. like a weasel a little bit, or like a civet cat, mm -hmm. similar to that. And so when I work at the zoo, it could be anything. So sometimes bats, see that's with gas anesthesia. <laughs> Loris, we have Loris at our zoo, so same that you have, yes. Yeah. This is very low. Uh, it's a slow Loris. Yep, yep. We had to brush his teeth every day because he had bad teeth. This slow Loris can help get any. And sometimes captive captive bears, and one of the places I work, um, the animals are used for filming for movies. Mm -hmm. So you can go and there, even the big grizzly bear is trained to roll over and I can listen to his heart and, you know, if he has problems with his feet, I can do sedation locally. I thought it was a statue. If you trust him, no, it's real. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, he's in a lot of movies. That's how I have to be so proud of A grizzly bear? Yes, yeah, thank you. Yeah, They are good at your feet, I think. He's more than a part of the other. How much does he weigh? Oh, he's like uh, probably 800 kilos. Yeah, yeah, he's huge. Fat. Yeah, he's so fat. <coughs> yeah. Um, also in the zoo, we have dwarf crocodiles, so working on the crocodile. Do you have dwarf crocodile? No, no, you don't. You don't have a human? You have in the new area, it's naked. No, no, this is when I'm at the zoo. Because I go work at the zoo too, so this is what I'm doing. 